As the sun rises on another day here on the Broke Rock server, this is Broke Rock Season 5, Episode 10. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my name is Kai, and yes, we are here on the Broke Rock server. I really did enjoy that sunset up there from the roof of the castle. The castle is actually where we're going to start today's episode, because we have a secret. If we head inside of our castle, if you remember we had these rooms on the four corners, there hasn't been any progress made to the actual physical castle itself, apart from these pictures. I have got this little room here set up. Uh, the design on this will change slightly. It doesn't look very pleasing at the moment. It is only really for the fact of this button and this floor design. Because I was speaking with Void and Lost, and he found a version of this condensed down the redstone, and we have a new trap door. <laughs> Which is absolutely awesome, and I do love it. It actually is just down into, yes, that's right, we have ourselves a tree farm. As I said in the last episode, it was good to build. This is a design by Silent Whisper. I have tweaked the timings and stuff a little bit and I've made the cube maker at the end slightly smaller. This will grow any tree if you put it into its placeable mode, which is both these levers on. If you just have it on the bottom lever, it just constantly bone meals these moss blocks. That's dirt at the moment because once that bone meal dispenser will change it on the moss and so on. So I am going to put it in place for mode, you know, just to show how it does work. I have got a little bit of bone meal here. Take the 31. And this will only fire off the top piston and it will basically just grow this tree. Really simple like that. It does that for everything. Do it for birch. If we do change it into oak, we have to push this lever which extends the ceiling down a little bit so that we have not got any issue with that. Do it with oak. We need to be careful there's no beehives come out because if you have any beehives it can break the farm. And I'd say I had to change some of the timings a little bit. I'll just do spruce as well since we're here. Once it gets rid of some of the leaves. Come on. Oh, now you're out of bone meal. That's fine. I can live with that. But I say, it does everything and it collects all the drops, which is absolutely cool. The AFK mode is pretty much the exact same thing. It'll let that filter through it. Put some more bone meal on here, just a little bit. I'm not going to spend all day here. And basically, you can just stand here, as long as you put a bone meal on, you can stand here AFK and it'll just constantly keep breaking this whatever appears here over and over again. Eventually, you've got an azalea tree because it has a moss block. And it pushes it around into the cube maker. I'll leave that running. There's not much bone meal. And obviously we'll have the cube at the end here, which will, you know, it's pushed by this. As you can see from this side, the thing seems to be super reliable. There's a couple of bits and pieces I'm still looking to tweak on it. I would like to have an, a way to automatically input the bone meal and stuff. But as you can see, it is great. And for a very lot of work, apart from bone meal, it does exactly what it says in the tin. So the only issue I seem to have at the moment with, with this farm, if I turn that back off, is that it uses a lot of bone meal. In the last episode we obviously had a look at the little cheaty bone meal farm that we have over here, which would do the job nicely, however, zero tick is not something that everybody likes. Uh, I'd prefer not to use zero tick if I can. So as an alternative to the zero tick, if we head up this scaffolding here, and also, obviously, there's a staircase over that side, but we'll go this way. I have built Voiding Loss and Mike D Crafted's um, Moss Bone Meal Farm. Which is really, really cool, and I do like it. It took, it, it took about an hour or so to build, um, and then took another three, four hours to fully prime. I am still going to tweak this. I'll speak to Voided once I get a chance to out. Once I do speak to him, uh, I want to see the way that this actually, a way to tweak this so it doesn't fail. Uh, it doesn't use as much bone meal to start off with, but I do really like it. All you basically got to do is push this lever, and this will just constantly keep stone generator, what will keep pushing the stone along, which breaks the bone meal blocks. We'll push this block back before I forget. 
as you can see, pushes it down into this end here, into the composter, which is at the bottom there, pushes the bone meal up into this water stream. This um, lectern with book here is what's controlling how much bone meal goes into the actual main input chest. And because this only uses a single piece of bone meal every time, you'll see that it won't actually physically change because the system is primed all the way through. And it will obviously, I did, this is the second day recording this, so there won't be a lot, very little in here, but it will produce bone meal in here every time. I will leave links to Silent and Voided's farm in the description. So we'll turn that off and yeah, so hopefully once I speak to Void and find out a way to try and, I think there might be a way to increase this slightly but I want to run it by him first. As you can see that's still producing bone meal down there, you can hear it. So this is actually what's took up most of my week, um, setting up this trapdoor system um, and building these two farms, which is the reason I haven't actually got much more of the base plans done. But, you know, it is getting very close to Christmas, so RL comes first as well, so that's lots of things to do there. I have been over at, I've messaged Jomica, who is another one of my server mates, and I spoke nicely to him about using his creeper farm. So because of that, we finally have enough rockets to be able to start the, to jump over to the raid farm location. And once we do that, we will get the raid farm started. If you haven't already, please do check out the other Broke Rockers, they are all absolutely amazing. Um, their links are on the bottom of this video. There is one more thing to show you on the base here, I'm not ending the episode there. We have a really, really cool way to get back up into the castle. Did Emery spot it on the way in? So, if we head towards the back of our drop chute, there is a secret path to the left here. And it's only a secret path because I can't think of any other way to link it. <laughs> Which takes you into a water stream. Can you guess where we are? Yep, we're behind the skull. I might change that painting. And it's just really, it's just a nice way to get back up here. You do need to watch. I'm going to put a... Oh, thank you. Looks like a wandering trader might have died. I will probably put some kind of... A clock at the bottom so if you come up here because of creepers. I do plan to try and get some kind of doors on this castle, maybe underneath there, pushing up might be a nice way to do it. The thing is fully mob proof, so we don't have any worries about that. This video is actually really special for me because this video marks my one year anniversary on YouTube. So if you haven't already, please make my year and help me reach my goal of hitting 50 subscribers uh, by the end of the year. It would mean the absolute world. And if you haven't already, also push that like button, share to your friends, and if you leave a comment in the comment section below, I will reply to each and every single comment. So this may be my last episode of the year. Uh, I'll try and get, I'll potentially make it one out between Christmas and New Year. I can't guarantee it, but there won't be one before Christmas. So, oh, there's a one on Twitter. I do hope you all have an absolutely fantastic Christmas and I will see you after.